Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com So I'm wondering how can I share this? Okay, let's have a look. Share. <laughs> so I'm just going to share on Facebook. So this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And it's a live broadcast, I guess. Let's see if we can do another album. No, no. Uh, Friends, YouTube, Colchester, Public... No, so I'm going to have to oh yeah actually I'll do that so only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes because it may cause drowsiness yay And if you're watching on YouTube, which will be, you'll be watching it back because it won't be live when you're watching on YouTube, then please, again, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. That seems to be... Oh, I can't seem to add it to Twitter for some reason. But I can add it to Facebook. Hmm. Ah, well. I can add it to a message. But that's no point. So... Because I'm live, I welcome you to join me, and, you know, I'll have a little participation along the way. My squeaky chair, it's going to get me tablet out. I had a really lovely right I've just got <laughs> eventually my chair will stop squeaking I had a lovely message today let's see if I can get up the uh, bum 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 ah. I wonder where my email is it's not there I thought I would have had an email on the tablet I'm sure I did Google Chrome photos uh, settings clock game messenger play oh that's very strange Oh well, it don't matter. So welcome for listening. <laughs> welcome, welcome for listening. God, oh, I made myself snot. Sorry about that. Oh, you know you do that. It's it's worse when you're in public, and there's people watching. And. Uh, it's the last thing you need when you're in an interview. So settings, microphone, micro. Oh, there we go. No, OneDrive, Skype, PowerPoint, Excel, Word. That's not what I want. Talking of snot. This is a story. Oh man, it's totally true. It was in the summer. 
and I think it was after, yeah, it was, I can't remember what year it was, it was quite a long time ago, probably might even be nine years, ten years ago, and I signed on for a short while, just for about three weeks, no, three, about two months, maybe three months, I signed unemployed. And I went to the job centre and filled the forms in properly online and then I went in and I had to have the an interview and they basically just checked through the forms to make sure that everything was correct, you know, all that stuff. And I remember it's quite I just remember it quite vividly because the, the job centre is not there anymore. It's now in an, like an office block, and it's I've not been in there other than uh, with a friend, and it's nothing like it used to be. Um, but this job centre before the one that was in town, uh, it's. So you'd go in, you could see through the window, and there was the machines, like the, I don't know what you call them, uh, it's a bit like Argos is now, if you, I don't know if you have Argos, where you could uh, you press on the screen to look and search for jobs. And there was maybe, in that place... I don't think there's probably more than four. There might have been six screens to look at. And there was a security guard in there. Sometimes he'd stand at the door. Sometimes he'd stand near the stairs. Uh, Sometimes he'd stand near the... That's just like this podium. Not a podium. What's the thing that you... If you're going to do a speech, it's quite often made of wood, and you'd put the book or the piece of paper that you're going to read off of in front of you, and the thing would hold it up. But it's quite often it's a big, a big thing. You know, it's a big piece of wood made into a. Uh, it's a lot of. A lot of effort put into something just to hold up a piece of paper. But uh, I think churches have them and schools have them as well. I think uh, maybe universities have them. Um, Yeah, so there's a few different places. Anyway, they used to have one of those in the job centre. And the security guard sometimes used to stand near there. And that used to be a place where... But it wasn't necessarily... It was kind of like a yeah, similar kind of thing. But the a member of staff would have a, a book with a list of people that had appointments... And the idea is you'd go up to the person and they'd say hello. They'd say good morning or maybe good afternoon or eop or how do or, you know, you're at duck. You know, whatever. I suppose it depends where you're from or part of the country. But in this particular um, job centre... They just, I think they just say hello. Just, you know, basic, basic. And they say, so, who are you here to see? I said, I don't know who I'm here to see. So have you got an appointment? I said, yes, I do have an appointment. Well, who are you here to see then? I don't know. Have you got the letter? Yes, I've got the letter. Well, who are you here to see then? And I said, I don't know. I said, well, can I have a look at the letter then, please? And I show them a letter. And they say, oh, you're here to see Susan. I said, oh, 
still don't care really about the name of the person and uh, they'd say that's a bit rude I said oh, I didn't mean it to be rude I didn't think you'd hear me I thought it was under my breath and I thought there was a, a big enough distance but I think what happened is uh, the security guard was is, had his side to me and what I whispered actually must have gone into one of his ears and echoed through his empty head and just uh, came out the other side so you could <laughs> hear it and they said that that's even that's even ruder I said yeah sorry about that and they said well if you go upstairs and go to the left sit down and somebody will call your name out so that's what I did there was actually the stairs they had a lift on the left hand side but that was more for people I think with uh, that needed to use the lift I, I didn't come into that category so I just there was also another place there was some desks downstairs as well where you could go in and uh, you could get help with forms and they'd photocopy forms and they'd send forms off for you to uh, the various departments connected with the job centre so they were quite good and there was this bloke that worked there and he was, he was bald and he was really nice Not he was bald but he was really nice I'm not saying that him being bald wouldn't automatically mean that he's not a nice person because that's not what I was saying I'm sure there's a lot again that sounds bad I'm sure there's lots of very nice bald people that's not what I'm saying either it's just and it wasn't that I only remember him because of his lack of hair it isn't the only reason the reason I remember him because he was really friendly and helpful um, and he was bald I, I remember him being bald uh, if if he had big bushy eyebrows I probably would have remembered that um, but he didn't because he was bald Not he, I'm, I'm not saying that people with big bushy eyebrows can't be bald because being bald doesn't mean that all of your hair goes unless you know it's certain degrees of alopecia and uh, baldness can mean that I know but uh, I know someone that had alopecia I've known two people that have had alopecia and it's it's not taken not that it's taken it's uh, it's not a disease but it's not taken all of their hair it's uh, there was one person a comedian uh, that I knew and he had like tram lines it's I think he used to make jokes about it, but I think it used to be, or we we did it behind his back. I'm not sure, but he. I don't know if you've seen those crop circles. It was a bit like that. It's like little miniature UFO had come down, and landed on his head at, during the night or something, and that that was uh, a comedian. I said I he was a comedian in in London that I knew for years and years and I think he used to tell jokes about um, we, we all well, some, there was laughter concerning his his hair from some places I think it was more he, he was a comedian so he, he told jokes about it and uh, we'd have laughed anyway I think regardless of if he took jokes or not but um, no he didn't no we, we wouldn't and he I've never had that and you can get it through stress stress can really cause um, hair loss and but I think it's it's got to be a very I'm not an expert on this clearly Um. I'm not really an expert on anything 
thankfully. I don't... No, I'm not really. I don't... I just... I don't know if I'd want to be... I kind of wanted to be an expert on chronic pain. I see, the things I really wanted to be an expert on... When I was... As I've grown up... I was very into witchcraft. <laughs> Sounds like... Sounds like a bit of a weird thing to kind of admit, but... I think we're at an age where I'm not going to um, get burnt at the stake. But I was, I was very young, you know, I was, I was 13 probably at the time. And the reason for me getting interested in witchcraft was because I... I was at school and I didn't like any of my lessons. I wasn't interested in, in any of my lessons. I mean, not any. Nothing. Zero. Until my RE teacher, and that's religious education, my art religious teacher uh, took an interest in me for some reason and she was the second religious teacher that took an interest in me uh, the man before her also seemed to like me so I don't know why that is um, I feel I only had three teachers seem to show me any kind of uh, kindness or respect and a dinner lady as well when I was at school there was the maths, a maths teacher I had Mr Johnson and he was a beautiful man absolutely beautiful man uh, lovely seriously he's, he's kind of the I don't know I just I feel love when I think of him it's weird I just because he was kind to me and he was the first teacher to be kind to me not based on my um, not based on my achievement my you know because really didn't care about maths or any other subjects but he he at least gave me a chance you know and then because I went into to the first year of high school back in 2000 no 2000 in 1981 September so I go to this school I'm absolutely tiny compared to everybody else and uh, so I'm in the school I even remember I remember I remember the actual classroom where the maths took place the mathematics because I think you don't you call it in America you call it math not maths we call it maths which is short for mathematics not mathematic so math doesn't it's, there's an S at the end because yeah anyway uh, the um, he had this big bushy beard and long black hair I think he had long hair but he had he had a big beard and I remember him sitting sitting down and actually making an effort with me trying to show me how something worked and giving me a, I don't know just showing some respect I suppose well anyway he he, he left after a short time because he got ill and he didn't see him again 
and then we had you know replacement teachers and then it became a competition to see how naughty we could all be and I was pretty good at that uh, you could say I was an expert at being naughty back then so what happened is well, I don't know if that's the only reason but I got put into a different class uh, the like a remedial class or the, they called it a dunces class back then so so after that nothing really didn't really get on with any of the teachers and I think word got around about me and most of the teachers just left me alone to just do what I wanted to do for the next five years and but I had one RE teacher he was a man and he lent me a tape to take home with me and it was the um, what was it called Joseph and the Technicolor raincoat or cardigan or whatever and I don't know how we got around him lending it to me I think he must have played it during the class and I said oh I love that you know I did I still do um, and that's long before it became well no it was obviously it was popular but it, it had like a, a resurgence in the late 80s with Andrew Lloyd Webber and Jason Donovan and various like celebrities taking over the role well I listened to the original the album you know the original album and I just loved it absolutely loved it and I did go through a phase where I thought I was Jesus I'll be honest with you so it's true I did not so much Jesus but I thought I was uh, some kind of a spiritual being and what happened is we had the Gideons Society come round the school and uh, they were a, they were a Christian society and they I think they're worldwide and it's, they basically give out Bibles for people to read for free now I like free things and I loved books always loved books so a free book was like wow and that's before I was really into girls so a free book I took that I was going to say with both hands but it's a pretty small bible it didn't need both hands it was like really it was red I think you can get some of them in blue but this one was in red and I've actually got I've got a copy not the original but I've got another version of that in my bedroom actually the writing's way too small to read really now it's very thin paper it's, it's uh yeah but I I remember reading it pretty much like read the whole thing and I could really relate to I don't know, sort of some of the suffering that Jesus went through and all that stuff. And I don't want to go into religion, but I just, just you know, I just went through that period when I just, uh, I changed for a little while from being rough and ready to putting up with people's rubbish, putting up with people's crap for a little while uh, and letting people walk over me. It didn't last long. But I think part of the reason was because I got the Bible, I got this Bible, and at the same time my dad went into hospital to have a like a major operation. And 
the two kind of coincided at the same time, which is probably what coincided means, isn't it? And plus, I think it got me back into that. Because I, I was, I lived with uh, Catholic nuns for about two years, maybe longer, in a children's home. So we had a church in the garden and we used to go to church every single day. And so I was brought up in a very, very, for, for that period of time, very strict religious environment. And the school we went to was Catholic as well, of course. Uh, well, you're not going to go to any other school, are you, if you live in live with Catholics? So it was very Catholic, very strict. So I suppose having moved away from that, but then reading the Bible, it kind of eased me back into something that I was quite able to do easily you know quite able to get into that kind of religious -y kind of frame of mind a bit anyway it didn't last long so I got back to my old ways of chucking desks at people and being naughty so that was alright lending money <laughs> I was a money lender can you believe it the age of 14 15 I used to lend people money charge interest uh I had my own collectors. <laughs> it's, it's, it's embarrassing. It's silly. Very silly. So, I... So I borrowed this tape of the Joseph for the Technicolor um, elephant and I really really loved listening to it. and I think I copied the tape and I like just you know did a copy of it and kept that and I used to listen to it nearly every day and it's something resonated within me and I don't know what or why still not really sure but something really um had a, a deep effect on me and with religious studies at that time even we did start to kind of look at other religions but not much you know it's really more about Christianity um, that was pretty much the topic you know for the first couple of years of high school um, but I think I took RE as a subject and like I chose to do RE in the last three years of, or two years three years or whatever as well because I had to choose something and we had this new lady and she was kind of Indian I think she was from India but she was talking about other religions so you can hear there's a cat outside it's been really windy and now it's raining I bet that coffee that get coffee what's a coffee but that f cat looks fluffy. Nearly said, I bet that fat looks cluffy. <sighs> but yeah, it's. Uh, I got really interested in. I'll tell you how I got interested in religion. Other than, you know, because when I was living with the Catholic nuns, I was not interested in it. It was forced upon me. I didn't have any choice. It's, it's you know, it's the same with most kids that are brought up in a religious situation. They're not, they don't choose it. It's just what's fed to them. Um, pretty much, I suppose you, bring, you could bring a child up to believe absolutely anything. 
with the right circumstances and environment or wrong depending on how you look at it you could bring someone up raise them to believe absolutely anything which has been obviously proved many times and uh This RE teacher, she started started talking about, um, I think she was talking about, she started started talking about uh, Hindus. So I think she came from a Hindu background. So she was talking about Hinduism, uh, uh, Muslimism, um, Jewishism. Christianityism, uh, what other ones? Buddhism, uh, Sikh, Sikh, Sikhism, so various different ones. And she started, what she did it was really clever. She used the analogy of the Force from the Star Wars to explain the. Um, I can't remember, it's a long time ago, but to explain some of the religions and the belief systems and um, which was a good analogy because well, Star Wars is also made up made by, produced and uh, created by men so it's, ooh, controversial oh so it's uh I found it very interesting, but then she she went further and she started talking about beliefs, and this is something that I've been interested in ever since. Beliefs, very interesting beliefs. I'm very interested. Something happened today, again referring to people's beliefs. And how limited we are by them, or we can be, by by our beliefs. How blinkered. And she, we, she started talking about beliefs, but talking about things like uh, paranormal stuff. You know, tarot cards. UFOs, just things that people believe in that can't necessarily be proved. Um, astrology, you know, from that came vampires, werewolves, which I'd already knew about from the films, and plus, it turns out that my maths teacher was actually a woman. And she was a werewolf. That's why she had the big beard. But, you know, I just kind of... I got interested in it. And I can honestly say, apart from... The only two times I ever got interested in anything at school. At high school. Okay. Bearing in mind I was there for five years. Five long years the very first year in English we did a and there was a bloke there and he had curly hair who was the English teacher Mr Wright I think his name was and I think he had glasses and he had curly hair and there was a lady that was in the classroom next door that used to walk past and all the boys used to just stare at her and drool as she walked through the she used to walk through our classroom to get out and she was um might sound sexist but actually what it was is she looked like a burger and everyone was really hungry so we were drooling because we just needed to eat because it was near you know we still had an hour till lunch it was like a little burger with legs cheeseburger walking down got me out of that one 
with massive boobs. No, with a lovely, lovely um, pineapple. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So he, this teacher, the, the man, he said to me. We didn't say just to me. He said to all of us, uh, we were reading out of a book. Uh, I do know the book, but I can't remember the name of it now. And I don't care enough to think about it, but it's about a monster. It's like a really, it's like a medieval poem. It's really old, very, very, very old. And um, the Gren... Gren, Grendel, is it Grendel or something? Um, and it's it was like okay, this, this is quite interesting. There's been a film made of it, but it's like very old English, very ye and thy and though and yonder and you know that kind of sort of language and so I was we read a bit I think we all had to sort of take turns in reading a paragraph and you know did that and then he said your homework for tonight is and I do believe of course this may be very distorted. All our memories are distorted, you know. It's, to actually remember every single thing that happened is... Well, so I suppose some people can, can't they? They have uh, what those uh, digital memories or something. Um, but camcorder memories. But they... I've... He said to us... This is what's happened so far, which we didn't need to be told because we we were there. We read it. We know what. Yeah. He said, write down what you think's going to happen next. That was it. That was the story. That was the the homework. Now, I wanted to impress him. I wanted to do the best bit of work ever. I wanted to write the best story and be the most creative. You know, and just, I wanted to do really well. And it's the only time ever at school that I wanted to do well at my homework, ever. It was the one and only time and this is what happened. I spent, I reckon I must have spent at least two hours, if not more, doing that homework. And I sat down and I had this desk that used to pull down. It's basically, it wasn't a desk, but it turned into a desk. You know, it was like a cupboard with a, a thing that fell down, that pulled down. And, uh, you know, you could write on it. You didn't write on it, but, you know, with paper. So that's what I did. And I had a chair, because I was fun. It's the best way to... It's easier than trying to balance, you know, crouching down. And the knees just give way too quickly. So I, I discovered a chair, and that was nice. So I used one of them. And I just, I was really pleased with it. I thought, I didn't, ex I'll be honest, I didn't expect uh, it to be on the evening news. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't expect anything like that. No, I wasn't expecting any kind of awards. Maybe a bit of cake, you know, so, but nothing to, you know. But I thought it was a good bit of work. I was 11 years old. Just, just turned 11. I was 11 at the end of August. And this was happening in September. So I just turned 11. I was very little, very little 11 year old. 
so I wrote this story about what happens next to is it Grindel, Grendel, you know, what the monster is uh, it's a it's a story anyway, I think I forget. Anyway, I, I wrote what I thought was gonna happen next. Bearing in mind I had no idea what was gonna happen next. I hadn't read the book. Only the bits that we read during the class. There was still quite a lot of the book left to go. Never seen it on telly, never seen the film. Still haven't actually. I still I can't watch it because of just, just don't want to don't want to spoil it. I think my version is probably the best version there ever could be. <laughs> That's what I thought at the time. So I had a really big ego, a very, very um, arrogant when I was 11, clearly. So I put, I gave the homework in the next day. And I got the, the, the work back with a very, very, very low mark. Very low mark. And... I think it was even to the point where like it was this like this is ridiculous it was just, just it was apart from the, the spelling um, okay spelling mistakes fair enough because I know part of English is learning how to sp you know spell correctly when you write stuff down and so that's that's fair enough I don't I I get picked up on that and I did, you know, always try to improve a little bit with that stuff. But the teacher, he started to pick me up on the storyline. Bearing in mind it's my storyline and he said put down what you think's going to happen. So whatever I write, how can it be wrong? It can't be wrong, can it? It's like, just... Whatever I write is what I write. And that's what I think is going to happen next. So he put messages... I think... I can't remember if I actually spoke to him. Or not. I kind of recall going up to him and saying, look... Well, I probably didn't say look. I was, wasn't quite that... That confident. But... Um, Please, Mr. Teacher... Can you, uh, why have I got a, a Z? Well, if you're in America, it's a Z, but it's not, it's a Z. Uh, supposed to be Z, not Z. Where did you get Z from? It's Z. Can you imagine going to an English class and saying, yeah, uh, why did you give me a Z? You'd get marked down straight away. Can you imagine in England saying, excuse me, why did you give me a Z? A what? A Z? Do you mean a Z? What's that singer? Something Z. I forget. But I've never been corrected. Don't you mean Z? No, Z. But it's okay, we can let it go. I think we should... <laughs> we should all get on with each other. We invented the language. So, uh, what I was going to do is... I went up to him and I said... Oi, teacher. What are you, what are you, what are you going on about? What are you doing? You give me a lot, lot low score for. What's that all about? You having a laugh? Are ya? Eh? And they said, I, I, I don't know what you mean. Oh, how, how dare you speak to me in such a manner? How dare you address me in such a poor, illegitimate way? What do you mean, illegitimate? What are you saying about my dad? I didn't say anything about your dad. Or your father, should I say. Not dad. Oh, how common. Mm. I'm not common. 
okay, I am, I am a bit common. So he, he said, well, what, what, would, what, what, what would you like to know, young man? I said, well, I did this thing. I did exactly what you said to do. You said, write down what you think is going to happen, you know, further on, after this point that we've read up to. He said, yeah. I said, well, that's what I did. And you've marked me down and you've uh, given me some really lots of critical comments I don't understand it you said yes such as such as what well, what kind of comments have I left don't you remember no I don't remember I was I do lots of marking of many 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 different people's work okay well, first of all, he said there were no buses at this time. Buses weren't invented at the time of this story. He said there was no television. He said that a monster was not able to cook lasagna. You said that there's no way that street lights could ever dance. Yes. Well, it just seems a bit rude because it's my story and in all fairness the story is about a big scary monster which doesn't exist so if we're in a world of things that doesn't exist can't I therefore have things that also doesn't exist like dancing lampposts and maybe some things that do exist, like buses. And he just didn't seem to get it. He didn't seem to understand that actually I put a lot of work into this. A lot of work. And... Uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know if, because he was my, my form teacher as well, I think, I think, I can't remember, but he just didn't, he just didn't seem to like me very much, and I did say to him, do you like me? He said, no. I said, oh, okay, that's why I know that he didn't like me. I said, why? Why don't you like me? He said, just, I don't know, you're just not my kind of person. I said, yeah, but I'm a kid, I'm just... He said, yeah, but some, you know, sometimes you, you click with people, you know, sometimes you don't, and you're someone that don't really care much for. I said, that's just rude, I'm, I'm a child. I'm a student in a school. It should, you know, it should be some kind of caring. He said, yeah, but you can't force it, can you? I said, what? It's, that's just... It's very true. It's actually very true. But I don't know if it was the academic aspect of me that he didn't enjoy... Or the fact that I kept chucking tables at people. So I think that might have been 
Because I did, I did, yeah, in, in my first parents' evening. I remember they came home and they said, we've got to do something about you, keep your... Teachers have to keep physically removing you from other pupils. And I was like, yeah, but they're being rude. Because don't forget, I was brought up to be to not be rude, to not swear, to all that stuff. So I swear now, God, I swear every opportunity. I've ruined many barbecues with my potty mouth and uh, I, I remember I ruined a party there was this friend of mine and there was a bunch of people that we all knew all together and she says uh, someone said to this one this, this female who I knew as well. I didn't know her that well, but I know there's a few of us there and she said, uh, are you... She said to her, oh, you look really... You look really happy. And she said, yeah, yeah, it's uh, got some good news, but I don't want to tell anyone yet because I haven't, I haven't told... I haven't told my boyfriend... And I shouted out, are you pregnant? I didn't realise it was so loud. Everybody in all the different rooms of the house heard me shout that out. And I possibly shouted her name out at the end of it as well. And she said, yes, I am. I wanted my boyfriend to know before anybody else and I said well I won't say anything besides I can guarantee I'll have forgotten about it by the end of the evening I rarely remember anything that's unimportant and that seems didn't seem to go down very well. I was like, well, what, what have I said? What have I done now? What have I do? You're urinating into the fireplace, Jason. It's not the place to urinate. Oh, I didn't know. Where's the sign? You know, my dad talking about urinating in a fireplace. My dad, he was getting angry, and he said, "Because uh, he's got he's got quite a nice he's got a nice garden. Not quite a nice. It's a nice garden. It's uh, it's okay. It's it's a lovely it's a lovely garden. It's a wonder. It's the best. You'll never see a nicer garden." ever is it's like heaven it's it's amazing sometimes if I visit I don't want to leave just because of the garden I mean there's been a few few uh, plane crashes due to that garden because the pilot's just transfixed goes past like oh my goodness that's beautiful and it's like Captain, should you be looking ahead? What are you looking at? Oh my, oh, Captain, you're right. Wow. So yeah, it's uh, it's a nice garden. And he was saying, oh, I put some, uh, put some bird seed out onto the, the bird. I think it's like a bird house or it was, like a bird table but it was attached to the tree 
not it wasn't the tree it wasn't like an anomaly of the tree you know the tree didn't grow it out of itself randomly it you know it was it was, it was attached probably not probably like with wire or something like that I do believe anyway this bird table thing my dad was putting seeds out or nuts or you know whatever and he said he was like getting upset and I said what's, what's wrong daddy and I patted him patted him on the head and said, do, do you need to be breastfed are you okay baby and he said no I said do you want your you want your bottle, bottle, bottle you want your little blanket your blankie you cuddle up to feel safe and secure oh he said no, stop that I said oh okay sorry he said what are you what are you, what's going on he said the wrong birds are eating the seeds that I'm putting out I'm putting the seeds out for the I think it was like the robin redbreasts or something I'm putting them out I giggled because he said robin and I had a friend well not a friend it was a what is it when you it's not a colleague an, or an associate someone that's at school with you but there was someone at school called Robin I've never ever known anybody called Robin other than you know Batman's boyfriend that's, that's it I've never known anybody called Robin apart from that Batman's life partner and Robin this this boy that was at school with me he was quite tall I think he had blonde hair that's all I remember so I said to my dad well what you so you're you're putting the bird feed onto the table where the birds feed and the wrong bird is feeding and eating the food that you put out for the birds he said yes I said what do you mean he said well it's simple really he sat me down got a big piece of paper out he's going to draw me a graph you know describe it in detail and uh, I was worried he's going to get a powerpoint this you know out and do some kind of uh, display for me but he didn't which was good it's bad enough when I had the the facts of life described to me by him uh, this might you know what you said some people get sat down and told the facts of life you know about the birds and the bees and about protection and being careful and perhaps waiting until you love someone and uh, all that stuff what my dad said to me was I remember it it was a Sunday and he said son make sure you keep it clean otherwise you won't be able to practice he let a little giggle he giggled and then he just carried on eating his dinner I was like what? that's it so that was my only kind of sex advice I ever got pretty good advice actually all in all it is good to keep clean but so my dad said yeah I've got the birds outside and uh, the wrong birds are taking the food so I'm putting the food out for the robin I said do you remember when you gave me that sex advice at the dinner table he said yeah but that's not really relevant is it I said no he said why do you keep mentioning it every opportunity 
you mention that. I said, I don't mention it every opportunity. He said, you, ju you just did. Yeah. Every funeral, every wedding, every, I'm just glad that, I just, uh, you couldn't think of what to say then, could you? He said, no, I couldn't. I was flabbergasted. And it just shows you how flabbergasted I was because no one's used the word flabbergasted since 1983. Okay, fair enough. So tell me about the birds. Well, the wrong birds. I'm putting the, the, the food out for the robin redbreasts. Robin. Yet the seagulls are taking the food. The seagulls are eating the food that's for the robins. And I ain't happy about it at all. So I offered him some advice. Because I thought, you know what? I'm going to offer him some advice. I'm going to help him out. I said, so basically, let me see if I have got this straight. Now, first of all, you put some food out into the garden for the birds. Yes, said my dad. Secondly... And see, so and the wrong bird's taking your food. So you want the robin rest bread, rest bread, bread rest, rest, breast, red, boob, bb, um, robin. Uh, you want the robin to eat the food, but the seagulls eat the food instead. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, son, that is what I am telling you. Well, here's my idea. Why don't you just put a sign up? This food is for the robins only. And he said to me, that is ridiculous. I said, not as ridiculous as getting upset because the wrong birds take the food that you put out there. And I ain't supposed to know that. A bird's a bird's a bird. You put food outside for the birds you can't be selective over which birds take the particular food unless you were to put it inside a bird house which only had the correct size hole for that particular species of bird to be able to enter. Because therefore, if it was a small hole, the seagull would not be able to gain access to the food that's inside that hole. He didn't say anything because he, he was uh, he was never there to start with. It's a make believe make believe conversation. But I did say that to him about why don't you stick a sign out, which didn't seem to impress him. I don't think it's necessarily our, our jobs to impress anybody. I don't really want to impress anybody. <laughs> I don't really feel the need. I don't feel the need to impress nobody. Nobody at all. No. So I've got no idea. Is anybody actually watching me? Was anybody watching me at all? I don't know. 
I'm just going to go onto Facebook because there might actually be. Um, oh, now I've got to put the password in. Blimey. Da, da. Whoops. Okay, the next bit. I've made my password so complicated that it doesn't seem to work. All the time. It's about fifty characters, seriously. Oh, I see now. Ever since I got um someone broke into my or they hacked my email account. I have been very vigilant. Vigilante. Been very vigilant. Oh wow, okay. Every time I go onto Facebook I just kinda wish I hadn't. I just see stuff on there, it's like oh Okay, how many more people can we blame for what happens in our lives? Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. It should be called Blame Book, shouldn't it? Facebook. I actually put a thing. Okay, right, I'm back. Good. A picture of a little laundry there. Da 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 da. Live now. Right, I don't think anyone's joined me. That's alright, doesn't matter. The. Oh, you never know though, if I go into spree car. I had. I put a message on Facebook today, and all it was was hope everyone's having a lovely weekend on Trump book or posting comments on Trump book that was just a message because it's it's pretty much non-stop political rantings and you know stuff like that on Facebook these days I've noticed Which isn't really my thing. And one of my. Oh, come on, really? One of my followers, or listeners, or whatever you want to call the person, posted a comment saying. Um, what did he say? He said something about if you if I follow this person if I'm a, a Trump supporter then uh, just it was just a bunch of unpleasant words really towards me and I never said I was anyone anyone supporter I was just joking around so hey what can you do eh what can you do tried to explain it to him that he was perhaps being a bit of a silly billy but he didn't seem to episodes audio file so
Okay, let's have a look if I can go into there. Paste. Okay. All right. Oh, so no one's left a message or anything. So it's okay, it doesn't really matter because whether I do this live or do it not live, it's still being done live, isn't it? And I never edit ever, not when it comes to these, uh, even if there's a sound, I don't bother. I don't know, if, 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 the, if the thing that they sent to Mars landed in the garden, I, I think I might maybe edit out that sound. But you know what? If a spacecraft lands in the garden, you're probably not going to have my full attention, if I'm honest. I will be otherwise distracted, I guess. That's what I'm figuring Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Where on earth, where, where on earth, 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 what on earth's going on? trying to figure where the oh there it is oh how weird I don't know what the stats are for this I was thinking I was thinking and again I don't know if I will I don't know if I won't obviously it's, it goes both ways doesn't it but I'm thinking thinking of Possibly doing a regular live broadcast, but not making a big deal of it, just telling you what time it's going to be on. And that those of you that want to come and listen to it live can. And maybe do a live broadcast from midnight until two, something like that. It's two o'clock now. So maybe midnight till two is a nice kind of slot. And maybe I can reach a wider audience around the world, possibly. But I realise 12 o'clock is quite late. But for those that are really, really, really need in need of being bored to sleep may benefit from having this on live at night possibly I don't know we'll see so I might be on here tomorrow at 12 it might be worth checking it out seeing if I'm live and if I am live let me just check. I reckon. I reckon. Um, it might even be on my website as we speak. Oh no, it won't be, will it? But there is a way around that. Oh, why is that not working? Oh dear. I'm going to have to sort that out. So HTTP, HTTP forward slash jasonnewland.com is not working. 
but www or http forward slash forward slash www dot Jason Newland is working or www.jasonnewland.com you damn you so if you do like what I do oh I can read the comment here here's the comment I was going to read here we go I'll read this and I'll go away this is from Bob it's on my website jasonnewland.com if you go to the page and go to the bottom of the page and just click on the little pen sign and then you can have a look at the comments and you can write your own comment at the bottom where it says enter your comment you don't have to be signed in or anything so you can do it anonymously uh, so it says Bob is written I've been streaming Bore Me on Spotify for several weeks now and find your voice and random topics soothing and relaxing. I'm in my 50s and been listening to talk radio programs at night since I was about 10. Radio has become loud and obnoxious with commercials and bumper music. I listened to Art Bell for more than a decade. His soothing voice and non-political topics put me to sleep. Sadly, he retired and passed away and I turned to internet radio looking for something else as I prefer background talk to silence even when sleeping in a tent in the woods. I don't like the television on at night although I fall asleep with it sometimes. Anyway, it's what I like to sleep to like some people like a fan blowing in the room. I suppose that'd be kind of like white is it white noise, white sound, white noise? He says, I enjoy your stories about your life, past and present, and hearing about Andre. There are so many things that make me smile with my eyes closed, but I'll mention a few. So, yelly neighbours, the way you pronounce helicopters, farts in church, and poo a shaped suitcase. Lifetime bags, boxes of cornflakes, and my favourite was when you were thinking about pizza and then your mind went completely blank. That happens to me too. I think you provide a great service to humanity and I appreciate your company. Bob in California. So, Bob, um, you're listening to this, so I want to. Uh, thank you very much for your comment it's very lovely and um, I will continue to make these recordings uh, the the deep sleep whisper sessions are still the most popular sessions I do however the let me bore you to sleep recordings are growing the audience is growing and they are fast becoming the most popular sessions that I do. Maybe it's because I'm stuck at them and I'm you know, now on 100 and I think today's 105, I think this one, 104, 105. And I can see a time when perhaps I'll do nothing else but just these. And maybe for longer, maybe maybe live every night. I quite like the idea of doing something like that. Where I'm kind of mixing everything together, if you know what I mean. Um, there's the positive suggestions. There's the, I mean, from what you said, I don't, you know, I don't really talk about politics I don't get into heavy subjects because well the title is Let Me Bore You To Sleep but if I it just you know that's it would be the opposite wouldn't it if I started getting into that kind of stuff but also I don't really I do I like listening to debates 
and I like to listen to both sides of the story, both sides of the opinion, and I find that very interesting. I think it's very, uh, for me, it's good for my brain. It's very good for maybe critical thinking and you know stuff like that, and stimulating. Uh, but I'm not really big on holding opinions for myself. I very much am a, a sitting on the fence kind of person because I just I see constantly the I don't know how angry people can get when they stick to when they can't budge and someone disagrees with what they believe in and how important it is to people and I don't really believe in anything that's that important there are some things of course um, but you know not I don't walk around with a big bag of them <laughs> with me uh, it's, it's like walking around with a big button saying press if you want to if you want a reaction, I don't do that. Um, so that's, but anyway, Bob, I really appreciate what you said there. It was lovely. And you know what? If I can, I don't know about this art bell, so I've, I might have to Google um, art bell. I'm going to Google him. I, get, I, I take it as a, as a man. And oh, you said his soothing voice and non-political topics put me to sleep. So yeah, um, I will. I'm going to Google him, and if I could do this, I'd be quite happy to do this for a living. You know, just to chat for a few hours every day, but without it being interactive necessarily I don't mind a little bit of interaction it's quite nice but not forced interaction not where I have to because I did a live broadcast the other day and I felt forced because the, the comments were coming quite quickly and I was trying to read them out and respond to them and that was a positive thing because it meant that those that were listening or viewing it were uh, partaking you know showing an interest but it's not enjoyable for me it's, I like things to be very slow very that's what I'm about very very slow person just I like to just things to be calm and I've I've kind of worked my whole life towards this and I know from when I was a child I liked to be calm I liked the space on my own to read maybe to watch television maybe just to even when I was a kid I used to sit just lay down on my bed not sleep but just lay there and just let my mind just wander you know just calm down and I've been doing that as an adult as well all my life Spending time just sitting, laying down on a bed or sitting back in a chair and just, you know, turn the television off, no music, nothing. I just, it could be during the day, after a meal, whenever. And just lay back for maybe half an hour. And just, it's kind of like a meditation, I suppose. So I'm going to bring this to an end because oh yeah and if you go to my website jasonnewland.com um, let's have a look if you put www.jasonnewland.com because there seems to be a problem with the HTTPP thing there's not a lot on the website now I got rid of the other thing the other website 
because I'm not going to be selling anything, so there's, there's nothing to buy. It's just me. So I've listed right at the top of the page all of the podcasts that I've got. The right hand side of the page, you've got the Spreaker podcast link with a logo, my YouTube channel with a logo, SoundCloud podcast with a logo that you can click, Facebook and Twitter, which you can click on. And then there's basically a playlist. Free hypnosis, MPs, MP3s and videos since 2006. And there's a list of the last hundred and however many. I should say that actually. No, oh, 202 episodes uh, out of about nearly a thousand. So there's 123 hours and 34 minutes on that podcast that you can... Uh, play to the episodes or download the episodes you can download or play any of them and but if you want to see all the other podcasts click on the Spreaker Podcasts banner to the right of the page and that will take you to all the different podcasts or just go up to the top of the page and you click on the one you want so there's 28 Days Stop Smoking Hypnosis Course 30 day relaxation plan hypnosis course there's a 7 day cure insomnia hypnosis course there's the chronic pain relief hypnosis chronic pain Tuesday daily hypnosis 2018 onwards in brackets deep sleep whisper hypnosis which is the most popular one out of all of them Fall Asleep Counting Sheep. Fall Asleep with Jason. Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply. Hypnotic Buffet. Hypnotic Pain Relief. In Bed with Jason. Jason Newland's Free Hypnosis. Did I say Newland's? Newland's Free Hypnosis. Let me bore you to sleep. Let me bore your pain away. Live relaxation streams. Natural pain relief podcast. Reduce your chronic pain. Relaxation course. Relaxation Hypnosis Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress and Anxiety and Panic Attacks Self-Help and Self-Development Hypnosis Short Anxiety Reduction Short Pain Relief Hypnosis Course Short Relaxation Hypnosis Course Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, that's another really popular one. Sleep Hypnosis with Music. And Stop Smoking Hypnosis Podcast. So Let Me Bore You to Sleep is popular. The Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply is also really popular. So there's a lot of, but they're all, they're all okay, but that's, they're some of the more popular ones, the most uh, also, the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks is a course I did, and it's 34 days. And I put a lot of work into that as well, so it's worth a look. So, thank you. And the Deep Sleep Whisper, I've now done 59 of those Deep Sleep Whisper hypnosis recordings. 59, so tomorrow will be the 60th, or later today. So you take care, thank you for listening, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.